There's a blackberry over here. Mm. Oh, juicy! Oh, look at that. Mm, that looks amazing. Mm. Oh, that's so good. Look at this, you guys, my seniors are blooming. Zinnias are my favorite flower. They can really take the heat. So I threw some seeds in this little space so I can walk by it every single day and smile. <laughs> Hi you guys. My first step, my small step this morning is planting sweet potatoes. They turned out really good. Look at all those roots. Can you see that? Yes. So I'm gonna separate all these and plant them. And these I took from cuttings. I had some old sweet potatoes come up. Look at that, you guys just came up. A few pieces were left by accident from last year, so they came up and I cut off the vines and I rooted them. But I also put a spud with the toothpicks and water and rooted that. So these are the little parts that you would break off and you would put in water to root. Some of them have roots already you just break that off and plant them yeah so both ways did really well i know some of you might not have some from last year so this is a good way to do it and i like to get my sweet potatoes in in may but that's okay i've still got plenty of time early june plenty of time for them to make some yummy yummy sweet potatoes for me and this is a purple variety stokes purple sweet potato, it was so good. Last time I planted it, it turned out really well. It made for a purple Thanksgiving though, so it was pretty funny. But um, I just got this from Natural Grocer, so I just got it from Organic Grocery Store. Yeah, all right, see if I can get this done. I have 15 minutes. <laughs> oh, I wanted to show you guys also. We have a mystery plant here. What do you guys think it is? It just came up, who knows? I'm gonna let it grow. I'm just gonna say, oh, I don't know, watermelon. I'm gonna say watermelon. So I'm gonna let it grow because I've got this area outside the sweet potato pit. Let me back up so you can see. This is the sweet potato pit I made. And so I'm gonna, there's plenty of room for it to kind of spill out into these vines. So I'm just gonna let it grow and kind of encourage it that way and keep watering it and see what it turns into. If anyone has a wager, let me show it again. Leave it in the comments if you know, think you know what the mystery plant is. I don't know, maybe squash. I don't know. I, I don't know. <laughs> we'll see. All right, I did it. Now it's gonna be a scorcher of a day, so I'm gonna tear off a few of these and put them in water and let them root, just in case some of these don't make it. I need to keep them really well watered. That's another advantage of planting them in May because it rains a lot more and you don't have to um, watch them so carefully with water, so. All right. Yay, homestead victory. Hey, you guys. Obviously, there are some things that are easier to do with my little charge. than others. <laughs> this is one of the things that I am working on, kind of hanging out in the backyard with him, potting up some plants that I have been needing to pot up. I'm using my same raised bed mix, and this pot, obviously, as you can tell, has seen better days, but pots are so expensive, especially, you know, nowadays, 
we're getting the squeeze. So um, I'm gonna try to make this last a little bit longer. I'm, I put some cardboard in a plastic bag and I'm gonna put it against that hole and maybe try to plaster the outside of the hole after the pot is full, full and that's pressed against it. Anyway, might not be a good idea. Might be a good idea, I'm not sure. <laughs> Just trying to get one more season out of this pot. All right, this, guess what is gonna go in here? I'm so excited. A friend of mine asked about my bees. So yes, they are still in this little nuke box. Sadly, my hive needs some repair. So good news, me and my brother-in-law, my bee buddy, <laughs> is we're gonna get into the hives this weekend, harvest some honey out of his hive see how they're doing they they seem to be doing great and then we're gonna look at my hive and see what repairs need to be done so yay hang in there girls you'll be getting a new home soon <laughs> but they're coming and going they seem they seem like they're doing well and sometimes it's better when a colony is getting started to have less space than more because they have to defend all that space against uh, intruders insects and hive beetles and so um, that's a lot of space to defend so sometimes it's good to have them in a small space they do better at least starting out but it's been almost a year so that's a long time <laughs> but that's okay are you flying are you flapping your wings I'm working smarter and not harder today. Okay, we gotta plant this tree. This tree has been hanging out on my front porch. in a bucket of water, because it is Texas and we don't leave anything <laughs> unless it's standing in water that we expect to live, right? That's about the right level. Okay. For the rest of it, I'm gonna use this Happy Frog potting soil friend of mine highly recommended it. She said it was really good and it does have some nutrients in it, some natural fertilizers that are really good. So that's good. But it was, it was pretty pricey. I'm going to give it a try though. It's a fruiting mulberry, you guys. Look how tall it is. So excited. I also got my longevity spinach from Breakers Creek planted and it's doing pretty good. Hopefully it will do well. It looks a little wilty today, but hopefully it makes a comeback. Got that potted up. Victory. And you guys are gonna see where I'm gonna put this in front. And my idea is to have it in a pot because I'm thinking it might be a tad delicate in the winter. So I was thinking perhaps I could take it in, at least into my garage, take it out. So we'll see. Anyway, I'm excited. Everbearing fruiting mulberry. I've always wanted one. It's a dwarf variety too. I've always wanted one. I'm so excited. I finally have it. The next thing that needs potting up are these moringa trees. I'm gonna put one in the soil, in the ground, in the corner of my garden, and one in a pot and see how which one does better. Because again, I was thinking if I put this one in a pot, 
if we have a hard freeze, I could bring it like in the garage and try to keep it over winter or bring it inside during the freezes. And this one I'm gonna put in the ground, see how it does. So we'll see. I'll let you guys know. Moringa, if you don't know, you can eat it. It's very good for you. It's a tree from Africa and it grows quite large, but here it doesn't take freeze as well. So it, it freezes down to the ground and then grows back in some areas. The next thing I planted was bee balm. Bee balm is great in the garden. It blooms it's so beautiful and the bees love it, obviously the name. And then it's really good for respiratory illness. So you, um, I think you guys saw in another video, I'll link it where my daughter was breathing it in, in a steamy vapor. Um, so dry it, save it for when you have a respiratory cold and breathe in the steam from it. It's wonderful. So yeah, and it grows big and bushy. It might be invasive in the garden. That's why I'm putting it in a pot so far. I'm going to wait and see because it, it seeded in a couple different places last year when I had it. I had it in a cinder block, so it wasn't really in the garden. It was in a cinder block, so we'll see. Yes, medicine from the garden. Oh, are you creeping into LJ's fun time, Nala? Yeah, you are. Is he creeping into your fun time? <laughs> Is Nala creeping into your fun time, buddy? Yeah! <laughs> The next thing I was potting up is aloe vera. My friend James is a master at growing it and he grows huge ones and it's so good for wounds. He gave it to me in this container which has no drainage so it was deeply unhappy. But it survived for a good, I don't know, a good six months. So yay, it's gonna be much happier in here. Our littlest blackberry bear. You spread it out. Somehow he knows to pick the black ones and not the red ones. He's smart. Picking blackberries while playing in the sprinkler. It doesn't get any better than that. Summer fun. <laughs> so in this back corner of my garden I am going to plant my moringa tree one in a pot and then in another corner I'll show you we're going to do one in the ground see how they do okay so believe it or not I'm going to put a diaper down over some of the drainage holes there's one more hole because in Dallas Texas drainage is not always a good thing <laughs> it dries out really fast all right Let's put in the soil. Yes, good. Now get the happy frog mix. My helper has to pause for a blackberry breakfast. <laughs> mm. I'm gonna get one myself. Now if they come like easily off of the vine, then they're done. That one's not quite, I and mean, they have to be all black. But the red ones are so sour. But that one's not, oh, it did come off. Okay, I get breakfast. The prophet has found a, for lift off. a fun way to water. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay, yeah. very exciting. Kids make watering exciting. <laughs> I appreciate his willingness to water for me. <laughs> Best kid ever. Well, I don't pick favorites in case any of my kids are watching. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> really great kid right there. <laughs> So you guys, this bed obviously is in need of some repair. <laughs> it's looking bad. But I have got a lot of projects going on right now. I have a chicken coop I'm building. I have a rabbit tractor I'm building. Let's see, even behind me, a rooster I need to paint, <laughs> a fence I need to rebuild. So this bed probably is not gonna be replaced until fall, I'm thinking, so that's okay. So I'm gonna pop something in it. 
it's right by the door, so I'm gonna put my ground cherries here. <sighs> I only got one plant to germinate, and apparently they're really hard to germinate. They're a little bit finicky to grow, but once they get going, yum. This is truly garden candy dessert. <laughs> the kids love to come out and eat the ground cherries, so I'm glad I got one. We're harvesting garlic, you guys. Look. Some pretty big ones and then some smaller ones, but that's okay. These are good. <laughs> Enthusiastic garden helper. Yes. Shout out to all of you who are gardening with the toddler. <laughs> Leave it in the comments. Best strategy. I could use some. Actually, take the hose and fill it up. First strategy, filling up the ice chest with water and toys. Wonder if I have room for a baby pool in here. <laughs> I should say it's a really cloudy day. Pretty cloudy day, so we don't want to get our baby sunburned. Uh-oh, he's going to make it a baby pool. <laughs> oh boy, here we go. <laughs> a man after my own heart. He wanted to help harvest the garlic. <laughs> I love it! You can never start gardening too early. Wow, that is like gardening with a little tiny crazy person. <laughs> I remember, it reminds me, I used to take the prophet, my youngest son, to the community garden. I started my garden in the community garden because I had too much shade in my backyard and I didn't, I didn't think of front yard gardening yet. So we started a community garden Oh, I don't know, over 10 years ago. And I used to take him in his little Lego wagon. Similar to this one. <laughs> over to the community garden to help me garden and all my friends would say, hey, there's the prophet, because his name is Elijah. Hey, how's the prophet today? <laughs> and he used to crawl around and garden with me. It was super fun. Anyway. Some things you can't do with a baby in the garden is set up a tripod. <laughs> Not really possible. And I'm always afraid that my camera will end up in the ice chest of water. <laughs> the ice chest of doom. <laughs> so it's a little tricky filming. I wasn't on YouTube when I was gardening with Elijah. It's enough kind of just keeping up with them. Not to mention filming. But he's on napping so here we go harvesting garlic <laughs> Yay. okay from the size of the stalks I would have thought we'd get a bigger like bigger bulbs just saying <laughs> that's okay I will take what I can get some of the bulbs seem to be a lot bigger. Um, I'll show you. These ones seem to be bigger and this seems to be a different variety than the other one. I got several varieties, so definitely want to go with this variety next time. <laughs> Gosh, I really wish I knew what that was called. <laughs> okay, I found one elephant garlic stuck in with the others. <laughs> you can see the difference. Can you believe that? And elephant garlic has these interesting little seed things on it that if you plant these, they will come up and turn into a garlic, a garlic bulb. Isn't that crazy? But elephant garlic is a lot more mild, a lot more mild. But I like it. It's crazy big. I'm glad I like it because I have a whole bed of it to harvest over there. <laughs> Home said victory. But because of these little seed, I don't know what they're called, kernels, um, once you plant it somewhere, I keep digging it out of this bed. 
I do not really want it in this bed, but it keeps growing back like every single year, which is not a hugely bad thing. It's just be aware of that. If you plant elephant garlic, you're probably gonna have elephant garlic there for a long time to come, <laughs> unless you work really hard to eradicate it. At least you can eat it. <laughs> Season's a meal. So to me, a bed of elephant garlic and then a bed of regular garlic is the way to go. That way they just don't interfere with each other and they don't interfere with other veggies. And they have these, elephant garlic have these amazing seed pods is what they are, but they're just amazing. And I probably could cut those off and the bulb would grow bigger, but I just love them. I mean, they're just magic for the imagination. Am I wrong? I just can't. I can't cut them off. So much fun. That is a great harvest, you guys. So exciting. And now I can do something else with this bed. These calendula flowers, they love the cool weather, so they are done. I'm gonna go through and cut off, I'm gonna let seed, seed heads dry out, and then I'm gonna come cut these off for you guys, because Everyone needs a bed of bordered by calendula flowers so you can make your own cosmetics and wonderful ointments and stuff. All right, and I just have them planted in these cinder box, in these cinder block squares around this bed. In the middle of my garden, I decided to do something kind of architecturally different. I have the eight by four, wooden beds, rectangular beds, and then I decided to do a cinder block one here, and it's got like a curved end. It's hard to see right now, but, and then I decided to do a cinder block one here with the same curved end, just to give it a little bit of architectural difference. And I really like my cinder block beds. One, I don't have to replace them. <laughs> I really like them. I'm glad I did it. But they were kind of, if you're gonna do a cinder block raised beds, you do have to level them well, which was quite a bit of work to get them established. But then once they're established, they do really well. So, I don't know. Oh, let's let the heroes get on their way. You can see here how I kind of curved the end with bricks. I need to go ahead and put some mortar between them. Now that I know for sure I want it this way. So they're cinder blocks. And then the end is curved. Yep, kind of in the center of the whole garden. Another fun thing you can do is give these to a friend, these little kernels. Believe it or not, that's what someone did for me. This is how I started my whole elephant garlic adventure, is just these little bitty kernels someone gave me. Planted them and there you have it, <laughs> the start of a grand adventure. <laughs> There's my garlic harvest, you guys, all laid out on an old window screen. And this is my farm sink under it. That's the one I'm gonna use for my washing station in the back of my garden someday. Somebody gave me a farm sink. But anyway, there's garlic all laid out to dry in my garage. And then I will store it inside in a mesh bag. I'll show you guys when I store it. You can braid it. I've tried that before. So yeah, I might do a little of that. We'll see. So we got our baby Moringa trees planted here. One in the pot and one in the ground. If you can see in the corner of the garden towards the front. So leave a wager. Let's do a wager in the comments. Which one do you think will survive? The one in the ground or the one in the pot? I don't know. We'll see. I'm gonna say the one in the ground will do much better in the summer, but then I don't know what will happen when winter comes. So we're just gonna say summer. Which one will survive the summer? I'm guessing the one in the ground, but I don't know, we'll see. This one is strategically placed by my fish pond. So I have to come feed the fish every day. So then I notice, oh yeah, I've gotta water the Moringa trees. So that, that was done on purpose. And there's gonna be another pot here uh, with my bee balm. And look, the bees love comfrey too, you guys. Look at that. Hmm. 
And in that pot, I would love to have a hibiscus, a Thai hibiscus you can make hibiscus tea with, which I love hibiscus tea. If you know me, you know that I drink it all the time. <laughs> cold, I drink it cold in the summer. So I need to go down and purchase one of those if I'm going to get one this summer soon, for sure. All right, which one will survive? This one. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 or this one. Leave it in the comments. So after I get seeds collected for these calendula flowers, and then I will probably plant marigolds in the squares. These are called pot marigolds. So these are like marigolds for the cool season, and then marigolds for the hot season. Whoa. Well, will be great here. Another yellow bush in the middle of the garden. <laughs> and then in here, I usually do my eggplants. Because it's about this time that the feed store has eggplant, little plants for sale. Now I've never done, as a gardener, I've never done eggplant by seed. How about you guys? Anyone done eggplant by seed? Was it easy? Was it hard? Uh, leave it in the comments if you've done it and we can all respect you. We can all show our respect to you. <laughs> All right, I'm excited, garlic. For those of you who asked for Egyptian spinach seeds, I have not forgotten about you. What happened was I planted them in my garden, like in between my beds, and they did not come up. So either I've got bad seed, or it's just too dry in the June garden to, to get them up. It has been a really, really dry year. Because I planted them actually first in May and then I planted them again. Oh, it's the end of May, right? But it's been a really, really dry time here in Dallas, Texas. So what I'm going to do is this. I am going to plant them in these little bitty pots right outside my door, my kitchen door, so that I can keep them watered and baby them and see if they come up. Because I do not want to send you guys bad seed. I've got them all packaged up, but I just thought, you know what? That would be really frustrating for someone. So don't want to do that. Don't want to be that kind of a gardener. So yeah, I'm going to baby these and see if they come up for me and then I'll mail out the seeds. These are Egyptian spinach seeds, just in case you missed it. And they are a survival green that does really well in summer. So if I don't have anything else to eat, I will have a chips and spinach. <laughs> For sure. Hopefully to add to my rabbit meat. <laughs> All right. I've also got my little mulberry tree right here outside my back door so I can baby it a little. Want to make sure it survives. My fruity mulberry, yes. And behind it, the birds planted a really nice little mulberry tree for me last fall. It is doing great. And I'm gonna plant it in my chicken yard beside my new coop to give the chickens much needed shade because it's a fast grower. And also, if I'm in a pinch, rabbits can eat mulberry leaves. They love them. So it's another survival green for my meat source. I should say, not to be confusing, this is a fruitless mulberry and this is a fruiting dwarf mulberry. Big difference. <laughs> no fruit on this one. I don't know why anyone would love a tree with no fruit when it could have fruit. I guess people thought it was messy, but ah, why? <laughs> but that's okay. The leaves are edible and well, edible for rabbits, I should say, and it will fast really quickly give me some shade. If you guys listen, this is the egg song. This is what chickens do to proclaim that they have just laid an egg and they're excited about it. <laughs> what a beautiful song that is. Thank you, girls. The babies are doing great. Speaking of something that I have to baby, it is getting hot out here. So it is time for the waiting pool. Every day I fill up 
a small shallow pool with water part way, part way, just a little bit, so that the chickens can come and stand on it. It's in the shade as much as possible, and the chickens can come stand in it and kind of cool off their feet, if you will. It's a Texas thing, you guys. It's hot out here. Especially in those over 100 degree temperatures. The girls are gonna all congregate around here in their little foot bath. And I should say this needs to be emptied every day because they'll stand in it, poop in it, and then they'll drink it. So it, it needs to be refreshed all the time, which is an, another summer job. It's okay. They're taking a dust bath. Are you ready for your foot bath, girls? I got it all ready over there. You'd rather take a dust bath. Okay, everyone's like froze when I came over here. <laughs> and I have to also make sure that my black soldier fly, fly bin has enough water, enough moisture. Water, life-giving in the summer here in Dallas, Texas. Absolutely life-giving. Are you proud of yourself? You should be too. Strut it out. Yes. Thank you for that egg. Thank you, Rocket. He has been really nice lately. And his comb is looking so good, you guys. I bet treating him for coccidiosis really helped him because it just seemed like it was not healing well. And he seemed to be losing weight, could be my imagination, not like I cuddle with him or pick him up ever. But yeah, I think I think that really helped the whole flock. So good thing I did that. <laughs> love my little farm sounds. I hope my neighbors love them as much as I do. 